Hey everybody, welcome back to JDM World. Everybody wants to have big base in their home theater, but not everybody wants to spend five or six thousand dollars to get there. So in my quest for big base for little dollars, I discovered a great product from GSG Audio. It's the Full Marty Flat Pack. Uh, GSG Audio is a Southern California company and they uh, precision build these boxes, send them to you, which you can then uh, assemble at home and uh, end up with something similar to this. In this video, we're gonna take a look at how hard it really is to build a DIY subwoofer when you have a flat pack to start from. So join me in this uh, quest and we'll see how it goes. The full Marty flat pack comes packaged in two different uh, pieces. Uh, one package contains the pieces that you just saw and that we're going to pan across again, which I call the large pieces wrapped in plastic. And then a, uh, a smaller package with the top and bottom um, and some internal braces that you see there. Um, you see a couple of the tools that I'm going to also use on this build. Um, this wood is extremely heavy, um, so I would strongly suggest that you uh, get a couple of different people um, to move this around. So you need at least one friend uh, to help with this. Um, this is a quick view of some of the uh, materials that I'm going to use during the build and we'll talk about those as we go through um, the actual build itself. Um, to get started, I'm going to do a dry fit on the, uh, on the pieces and this is another, uh, another thing that you really ought to do so that you understand how these things fit together. As you see, um, you know, they, they mostly will go just one way, but uh, when you build this, you need to put all of the first eight pieces together pretty quickly. Um, so knowing how they fit together and what to expect is, uh, is gonna be a benefit for you. So um, just as I'm doing here, uh, walk through, stick all of these pieces together, and you'll see how this jigsaw puzzle um, slides together. Uh, the pieces uh, fit together really quite well. Um, there's a little bit of play um, in the pieces so that you, know, you don't get stuck halfway through. A couple of things to note um, as, as you watch this video uh, first, make sure you use plenty of glue as you put these pieces together. And you really need to put glue on every edge that touches. Um, but beyond just gluing them together, uh, you're gonna need to make sure that you can get a good seal um, internally on this box, right? So this isn't like a sealed box where you just have to worry about those kind of outside pieces and, and making sure that you don't have any air leakage internally you want to make sure that that port is uh, is sealed up really well so um, when i put this together i used a lot of glue probably not as much glue as i ought to have used um, uh, so you know when i build my second one I, I will use more but i also had some uh some sealer that i put around the edges also to to try and help um, that being said uh, you know when i got done i did have some leaks uh, that i had to go back and fix and I'll talk about uh, where I found um, the, at least the most significant leak so that you guys won't have the same issue that I did. So at this point, um, we are installing the plate for the audio connector, the speaker wire connector, and I chose to use a uh, speak on connector. So you use the insert that you saw me just install. So you'll glue that in. Um, and I used a piece of wood to clamp that so that it would dry and I'll let that go first. Um, that it that really 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 looks nice you'll see it later in the video when I put the actual uh, connector in uh, and I, I love to use uh, pro cables uh, they're they're nice fat thick um, they, they look good um, and they have kind of an industrial feel which uh, which I enjoy in my environment as well um, at this point we've moved on and we're actually doing the the glue up for the first uh, eight large pieces and this gets pretty much the entire superstructure of the box done so you'll have a uh, pretty much all of the uh, the port build on the inside done, that superstructure is there, all of your internal bracing will be done, um, and it also gets you through the uh, the front and the back of the box as well. Uh, so when, you're, when you've done this piece, and the instructions uh, suggest that you do this all at one time and then let it dry, uh, you've gotten the, uh, the lion's share of the uh, pieces assembled. Um, and if you did your dry fit, uh, this should go very, very smoothly. 
Um, I would recommend that as you do this, like I said, use plenty of glue. And once you get it all together and, uh, and it's drying, I would then go back and then add additional glue uh, along each corner. Um, even if it's not uh, something that you think needs to be sealed. I mean, any place that you have a piece of uh, MDF touching another piece of MDF, I absolutely would, uh, would make that joint as solid as possible. Let's talk about clamps a little bit. Um, you're going to get a, a big thick instruction manual that shows how to put all this stuff together and uh, the instructions show that you can assemble this without clamps and I know a number of people have done that and uh, you know I, I'm not sure if that's the better way to do it or not but I had a bunch of clamps sitting around so I ended up using those in my build and it seemed to make things easier. Now uh, since I had clamps it made me be a little less patient with the build and try to do things probably more quickly than I ought to do them. So if you use clamps, uh, make sure that you, you give things time and you don't try and do more pieces than you ought to do. And for me, that really uh, kind of reared its head as I uh, did both of the sides at the same time. And you'll see that come up in a little bit. Uh, the instructions uh, recommend that you do one side, let it dry, and then do the other side and let it dry. And I think uh, that's probably the correct uh, correct way to do this, even if you're clamping rather than just using some heavy weights on, uh, on the sides, right? So if you use weights, you, you really can't do all the sides at one time, the two sides at the same time. But if you use clamps, you can set this on the top or bottom and then clamp the sides on and, and let it go. So um, even if you're a clamper, I, I would recommend that you go ahead and just do one side, let it dry, seal it up, uh, make sure that you've got beads on every piece of wood that touches every other piece of wood, and then move on to the other side. Let's talk about paint a little bit. In this, uh, in this finish, I used uh, four different kinds of paint. Um, obviously, uh, there was a little bit of trial and error, so I think you can probably not use that many uh, on your build uh, and, and learn from my mistakes. But I, uh, I coated everything with primer and then gave it some flat black. And then for the majority of the box, I used uh, Duratex with a roller. And on the front uh, face, I used metallic copper spray paint. Um, you know, the, the primer and the spray paint all is uh, as is expected, but if you not work with Duratex, that's really an interesting material and you're going to see that coming up uh, pretty soon. Um, for the ports, uh, the uh, instructions recommend that you paint the inside surfaces before you put the uh, bottom on and uh, that's what you just saw so i took the uh, the bottom piece i masked off the areas that would need uh, uh, glue and then i just took some flat black and uh, I, I hit that and, and covered that up um, i also will do that for the uh, top of the box here in just a bit and you're going to see that uh, as well as discussed before you can see how I'm uh, adding the second side on before I got the first side uh, completely done and dry. I would uh, absolutely do side by side. And uh, when you get that first side on, uh, take the opportunity to go in through the open end and seal up everything uh, and then uh, let it dry, put the other side on and then add uh, your sealant through the uh, subwoofer opening. Now we're painting the, uh, the inside of the port and you can see how I've painted the uh, the bottom uh, previously and use masking tape to mask the pieces that get glue. Um, this uh, will make uh, it much easier to have that black color inside um, if you can do that and masking that off is, is really quite simple to get done. Um, it makes the, uh, the, the painting much easier at the end. This piece that I'm working on now is the last piece of the build. Um, it is the bottom um, and it uh, creates the, the base for the whole box and is also the bottom part of the port. So I've got that glued on and I'm clamping that down and letting that dry. Um, at this point, while everything's drying out, I, uh, I took the front baffle. And so this, uh, this baffle is going to attach on with, uh, with the bolts and a wing nut. Uh, and I'll show that here in a bit. And I'm going ahead and dropping the, the primer on um, on top of that primer, I'm using metallic copper spray paint. 
and uh, you can see it's almost like glitter flying through the air and you know i was a little bit worried as i was putting this on because i didn't know how the you know the glittery metallic piece was going to work but it ended up being okay um, you'll you'll see at the end and uh, once you have it indoors it uh, it mutes it down a little bit so it's not as bright and uh, uh, jewelry gaudy like i guess you could say um, i took the uh, i took that same primer and i hit the rest of the box and uh, i'm just going to show a, a small portion of that painting but uh, I, I did the whole thing top to bottom on, on all sides. Uh, now it's uh, time for a second and then really a third coat on the, uh, the copper and let that dry. And then uh, I used the remainder of the flat black spray paint that I have to uh, add a little more base coat onto the, uh, to the box itself. From there, I did just a bit of sanding um, to get things down uh, the way I wanted it to. There was some glue and other things that I, I didn't like at that point, so I used uh, this time to clean up the, the edges and finish just a little bit. Now let's talk Durotex. Um, Durotex is way more than just paint. This, uh, this finish is really, really tough. Um, it, it goes on thick and it, it, it can take a beating. Um, I did two coats of Duratex. So the first coat I, I rolled on um, and I did it on all sides and then I sanded that down. And what you can see now is what it looks like after I've sanded it. Then I took uh, the, the Duratex and I watered it down uh, somewhere between 5% and 10% uh, with water. So I cut it with water um, to make it a little bit thinner so that uh, uh, the goal was to make it have more of a orange peel finish than a super, super raised texture finish. Uh, so I, I watered that down and then I hit all the sides um, with the watered down Duratex. And, uh, and then on top of that, I took uh, a 400 grit sandpaper. Well, actually I think that's 120 grit. It's the rough stuff. And uh, because this finish, I'm telling you, it, it is not like paint. This stuff is thick and hard and tough and I knocked, knocked off all of the, uh, the edges. And then once you have those edges knocked off, you can wipe it down and it actually looks really, really good once you get all the, uh, the dust off. I used some scrap speaker wire for the internal cabling on this uh, subwoofer. This is, uh, I guess, in-wall rated 12 gauge uh, sheath speaker wire, uh, but uh, you know it, it did the trick here. So basically you wanna fish that through the port get a significant amount on the front side so that you can uh, get that to your subwoofer easily and then uh, on the back side here you're going to attach this to whatever connector you chose i i chose the uh the speak on uh cabling pro cabling and that's a new trick i think is how you say it uh branded connector and these connect to the uh positive one and positive two connections terminals on this and uh it, it just you know you connect those on get them snug this pushes right in, the fit is great, and then you'll secure that with uh, four screws. I used uh, uh, the screws from Parts Express, and I'll put the link below. I, there's something like, call something like a cap head uh, hex screw or, or something like that, um, but they look nice. Um, now the, the screws that I have are longer than uh, this wood is deep. Now I masked off my drill bit, you can see the blue tape there. Um, for the length of the screw, but the length of the screw is longer than the depth of the wood, so mine went all the way through. Um, I have not seen any negative issues from this, but you know, if you're worried about it, maybe you could put some lock thread or something like that on the on those screws. Now, um, I didn't uh, I didn't film where I dropped this front panel on, but uh, here are a couple of pictures of what it looks like once I've got that front baffle on, and it really is starting to come together as a subwoofer now. It uh, it looks really nice. Uh, but once you get that front baffle on, then you need to connect it uh, through those four holes. And as you can see here, I used uh, the chrome bolts um, with a couple of washers and, and wing nuts to hold it together. And this is just a quick demonstration of what uh, the connected piece is going to look like. And um, I'm obviously trying to show that, okay, you put the bolt in the hole and then you <laughs> screw the pieces on the back. Uh, this is not as easy as it looks though. So I took uh, some painter's tape and I taped all the, uh, the the pieces, the two washers and the the, the wing nut onto, uh, 
uh, all together so that I could then just push that bolt through, uh, reach in and not drop those pieces everywhere as I tried to find the, the inside of that bolt and then connect uh, the two washers and the nut. And that made things a lot easier than trying to hold them all together with my hand. Now we need to get the subwoofer ready for installation. Uh, we're going to wire these voice coils in series. So we're gonna connect the uh, uh, negative off of voice coil one over to the positive of voice coil two. And you've, uh, you saw me just go ahead and uh, plug that uh, into voice coil two. And now we're plugging this side of the wire into the negative of voice coil one. When we cable this up uh, from the uh, connection, the connector, uh, from outside of the box, we will split that cable and the hot will go to one and the cold will go to two. Um, this is uh, just a quick look at the uh, hex wrench I used. It's very important to get the right wrench for this. Uh, those bolts are soft and if you try and use uh, pliers, you will, you will destroy them. So the right tool goes a long way in this situation. And uh, this is just me prepping the uh, the cables. So you saw how we prepped it and connected on the other side of the connection. Now we've just stripped this down, taking off the outer sheath, and we're gonna go ahead and uh, plug these into the, uh, the subwoofer as I described before. This will present a uh, four ohm load to your amplifier. So these are two ohm um, voice coils. Now, when you install the subwoofer into the case, um, I wanted to get the uh, the screw holes pretty much straight and centered. So I took a, uh, a ruler and uh, set across so I could see where the exact center of the box was. And then uh, I just eyeballed and dropped this in. You can take uh, some uh, zip ties and put in if you'd like through the holes and then hold that on each side and lower it down easily. Uh, but uh, I just uh, measured and eyeballed it and dropped it and it worked out pretty well. Um, for this sub, it, you don't need to add uh, additional gasket to it. It's got some gasket on the back. If you want to, um, that's not a problem. I have used additional gasket on this model of subwoofer in the past and it worked out just fine. And now things are very close. Drilling some holes, um, went through and got this done. Be careful to not let this drill bit uh, slide around. Um, when I uh, when I built my sealed enclosure, I actually broke the bit off inside of uh, the hole that was meant and intended for uh, one of the speaker screws, and you know that was kind of uh, fun to punch out. Uh, but uh, once you get that done, get your holes drilled, uh, you just drop these screws in, and I'm using those same screws that I got from Parts Express that I used on the back. Um, I've used these on most of my speaker builds so far, and I really like the, the way they look. They, they bring a, a nice aesthetic to the front of the box. So, um, you know, that's pretty much it for the build. I'm going to add on uh, a few photos of the finished product here at the end so everybody can see what it looks like set up in my basement. Um, remember, this thing is extremely heavy. Uh, not a little bit heavy, but it is extremely heavy. And that's why uh, if you look closely, you'll see I'm indoors now as I'm installing the speaker. I didn't want the additional 45 pounds as I was trying to navigate this thing down the stairs to the basement. It is super, super heavy. The last thing you need to do before you turn this on is to set up your uh, DSP so you can put a uh, high pass filter so you can knock out all the subsonics so you don't damage your subwoofer. I will post a video of how to do this with a mini DSP. Uh, uh, so take a look for that. And uh, as always, thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much.